Good morning, West USA. Welcome to another Tuesday morning edition of the West USA webinar, where we're here each and every week to help you grow your bottom line as I grow my bottom end. And I can tell you there's going to be a lot of bottom end growing this week. We just shipped our kids off to California for spring break. So uh, my wife and I, we're pretty much going to have a party all week. And I said, we're not cooking. One meal we're going to eat out. So uh, pretty darn excited about that. So hopefully you're enjoying your spring break as well. As always, if you've got any questions, would like copies of the slides, please feel free to email us at webinar at westusa.com and we will get that to you in a timely fashion. Uh, so here, a little peek at what we got going on today. Uh, we got Todd Menard here to give us a look at the numbers. We actually got Matt Baker here today to give us the Bookspan Baker Team's Mortgage Minute. We're going to do a little three pack on what do you do once you take a listing and what are some tips to be able to get more leads from your listing we've got the Hoff here and of course don't do that with Bob so let's get rocking and rolling with our operations officer Todd Menard to give us a sneak peek at what's going on in the market Todd good morning Mike good morning everybody well there's a few additional anomalies happening um, I don't believe that will surprise any of you that have been avid listeners of our uh, market analysis and, and stats uh, taking a look across the top of the board in red you'll see closed days on market is sitting at 69 days month supply at 2.94 that is just really way too low absorption rate sitting at 34.02 our average list prices are up to 519.910 continually moving up average sale price at 280 and the list price to sale price retention sitting at 97.14 um, how's it shaking up inventory wise well last week we were talking about the inventory having fallen under 20,000 uh, because because the increase in uh, pending and the inability to take enough listings to to positively uh, affect our inventory so but our agents are being lazy right we're not going uh, well I don't know about our agents but the agents <laughs> in the industry were um, but we're going to talk about how that's changed week over week <laughs> and pending is sitting at 6168 which again being over 6,000 is right where we want to be uh, looking forward to 7,000s coming by April early May uh, closed units sitting at 29 uh, 2952 it's a little too early in the month Mike to have any conversation about that really um, looking at our Active inventory days on market versus pending inventory. Active has slipped to 123.2, uh, but the big story of the day is we took 2,558 listings last week, uh, which basically has uh, helped. That was up almost 400 units. Um, days on market over on the right sitting at 69 days. So I, I decided to play a little thing down here on the bottom right just to kind of help you a little bit and see maybe a year ago, same time period, month of March, mid-March, sort of 14th, 15th, um, taking a look at inventory and, and the price ranges, uh, what the days on market are and were. Um, so here, the left numbers in the boxes are the days on market for the inventory in each of those selected categories for 2016. The numbers on the right, of course, are active. So taking a look at that, 90.67 is where we're currently sitting in inventory under 500,000. Last year, we were at 95. Everybody goes, oh, it's only five days on market. Five days on market as a percentage is a huge percent difference. I mean, when you're talking 5% difference in the marketplace, you're talking significant change. Um, taking a look at the inventory 500 up to a million, we were at 130 last year, uh, excuse me, 127 last year. This market market has slowed up to 130. We've been averaging about 131, 130 in the million dollar and up inventory because I know we are all, all, that's our primary market out there. Is uh, 218 right now. It was 210. So really, anything under $500,000 is about 5% ahead of the market as it was last year. Everything else is a little slower. So just taking a look at some numbers and seeing how those things apply for you. But again, here we were last week at 2238. We took 2,500 listings uh, this month, uh, this week. Excuse me. That's up 15, 14.4%. Um, that's a huge amount of inventory gain, and that's the reason why we're at 20,022 versus 19, just under 20,000 at 19. Uh, the pending inventory is, again, 6,186. Last week, we were at 6,011. We celebrated last week because we were over 6,000, you know, hit the bells, do the, you know, all the different things, uh, the, pop the pop the little streamers. I mean, it was a, it was a huge, huge 
thing to be over 6,000 this early in the season. Um, but look at this. It's continuing to climb up another 3%. We're at 6,186. So that's awesome. Taking a look at closed inventory, as I said before, it's a little too early to talk about the numbers per se month to date. But so let's look at the year over year, uh, the year over year comparison, month over month comparison for the last three months. Uh, in January, in comparison to January of the year before, we were up 16%. We 5,188 to 6,000 closed properties. In January, look at that. We were at 5,830. Last year, we were at 65.46, up another 12% last year. Now, you got to remember, for the last five years, six years, we've been going down in these numbers. So this is a huge turnaround. Take a look at the month of March. We're at 12.97. We're continuing to be in double digits better than we were last year. So when they said, hey, you know, Arizona is going to have a 30% increase in business, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be the, the, the city, the metropolis of choice, uh, you know, for real estate activity. We're going to be in the top 10. Uh, the, we are actually already, and this is why I wanted to point this out to you, we are actually already seeing these numbers. Uh, taking a look at the lower information, uh, obviously 2.94. We are well into a seller's market. So again, normally you'll see some some anomalous things happen. Sellers don't accept less, uh, don't take less, excuse me, in the offer. Um, they usually then balk at, at concessions. Um, usually the prices increase, things of that nature. Um, so those are some things we need to be worried about when we're sitting at month supply under four months supply. Uh, and of course, you see your eyes slide across all year this year. We've been in the threes where last year we were in the fours looking at prices taking a look at uh, the average prices 519 for list uh, taking a look at sales which is a little more important 280 is where we're at now we slide our eyes across we were at 287 uh, and in January we were at 282 so we're having some difficult times getting out of the 280s um, not a problem but just something to watch days on market as you can continue to take a look uh, you can see that it slides from 131 all the way down to 123 so you're really seeing in these in these uh, snapshots exactly how the market is moving, how it's heating up, uh, how the inventory is 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 having difficulty. Uh, but in the end, this is a great great market. There should be no reasons why you guys aren't closing transactions, aren't taking listings. Um, realistically, if you're not, my recommendation is get with a coach right away because this is the market. It, this is the kind of market when people who aren't working look good. So if you're not looking good, not working hard, <laughs> you definitely need to sit with a coach because this is this is the right time of year. So, Mike, that's the numbers and how they're shaping up. Well, I make uh, looking like I'm not working really good. <laughs> All right, Todd, as usual, appreciate <laughs> Thank you, it. Thank you, Michael. Uh, these numbers will be on the dashboard later on this afternoon, so feel free to download them and use them in your marketing materials. All right, now we got uh, Matt Baker with the uh, Bookspan Baker team now at Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation. And uh, Matt, if uh, you lose any more weight, I won't be able to see you over there. You're looking good, pal. Appreciate it. Appreciate you it. But like that's ten, not why I'm here. You look like so, 10 bucks. All right, thanks. Well, $9 <laughs> yesterday, $10 today. We're, we're improving. Uh, let's just jump right into the market. And it's been a while, so it's, it's nice to, to see you all. Um, you know, we did make a, a change recently, um, went from Home Street to Fairway. Uh, as a big team, it just uh, our the way our team is set up, it just works really well in inside Fairway and the way they've they've built uh, big teams. It, we, you know, we we usually are the biggest team wherever we go, and we're not the biggest team at at Fairway, which is actually um, sort of a a new challenge for for us and 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 my team. And so you know, they they have big teams and they know how to how to help us be more successful. So uh, let's just jump into the market, uh, sort of. Uh, as you can see across the board, four and a quarter. Uh, and as required, you have to put APR. And so there's um, various APRs based on your credit score and down payment and what those look like uh, with mortgage insurance and any points applicable rolled in. But you can kind of see that, you know, we're just kind of humming along in the in the low to mid fours day to day. Um, big news this week. And so I expect these rates to be changing is the Fed's announcement tomorrow. So um, we, we've already seen a little run up uh, in rates over the last few weeks as the idea of a March rate increase has already sort of been priced into the market. Um, my my hope is once they actually announce it uh, that 
you know, that, that we'll see maybe a little retreat back like that, that some of that initial excitement of, of, well, Hey, rates are going to be going up. So I'm going to price it in what oftentimes happens is it is overpricing happens. And so I, I think that we'll, we'll settle back down, but I don't anticipate us jumping up over, over the, you know, that mid four, you know, mid to low four range um, for the foreseeable future. I mean, I think that's just a sort of, we're in a healthy spot. Um, from a from that perspective, uh, let's jump into. Well, I wanted just yeah. to say when I'm looking at that, if I was playing the slots, that'd be a pretty sight. Four and a quarter straight across. There you go. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be <laughs> so sort of like winner, a royal winner, flush. Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one of the things I wanted to talk about, and and a lot of things that Mick uh, and Mike both do out in the offices, uh, is is print up uh, marketing flyers or have the opportunity for open house uh, marketing opportunities. And so I thought it would be a good idea just to show you some of the samples of of what it will look like under fairway versus where we where we previously were. So here's just a, a few if you wanted to scroll through just a few ideas of what some of the the material could look like. And so what I would recommend is reaching out to Mike, Mick, uh, or myself and and having us run uh, some open houses, uh, marketing flyers for you. Um, we have financing options so we can run through that and we can also co-brand it with you, which is a nice additional um, feature. And we have some you know, sign in opportunities and stuff like that as well. So uh, there's a lot of options uh, and I would definitely encourage you to be reaching out to both uh, Mike uh, in Ahwatukee and, and Scottsdale and, and then, you know, Mick in Arrowhead and, and, and you know, West and East, these sort of covers, covers both, but you, you're familiar with Mick and his voice as he's on this uh, normally these days. Yeah. And these are, these look sharp. I mean, you can't, you, I mean, that's the big thing. We're just so dependent on different vendors to just print us flyers and, and we never ask the question, well, how do these flyers look? So, I mean, this, you know, yeah. it's a reflection of you. So when somebody walks in your open house, whatever you hand them, well, it's got to look good. And we'll we'll talk about over the coming weeks of, of what some of the changes are that Fairway has versus, you know, maybe where we were. I mean, all the product and product offerings are, are the same. We do have some cool new technology. <coughs> Excuse me. So as we as we roll out some of these things and, and we can we can launch some some of these things out to, to your team and, and some of the West USA agents that would would definitely encourage um, that I think will be positive for, for you guys. So. Um, again, we, we always like to end with the books, Van Baker team difference. You know, we, we still, we're still the books, Van Baker team. We still do everything that we always done. Um, we just now have a new name. All right. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested in any of these materials, definitely reach out to Mick, Matt, but, um, Mike and, and them. And the, and the, yeah. Just, just the three M's. Yeah. 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 There you go. Those guys. Those M guys. M and M and M. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a new song. Uh, all right. Well, appreciate it. Right, and congratulations on the big move. I know it's going to be a big deal. It'll, and it's going to – and it only is uh, – I mean, you guys wouldn't do it if it, at the end of the day, wasn't going to be a benefit to us as agents. And that's what it comes down to. For sure. For all sure. right. Appreciate it, We've already it, started to see that. So. All right. So uh, let's talk about it. And this will be a good segue because we're going to talk a little bit about open houses on the, the three-pack. Uh, you know, one of the things that we fail to do as agents is sometimes really just create systems or what I like to call protocols. So if a certain event happens in your real estate business, do you have a checklist? What happens next? What are the things that happen next? Uh, because really at the end of the day, when it, especially when it comes down to marketing, you want to make sure that no opportunity falls through the cracks. So uh, I put together a little list of what are three things, and there's more to it, but what are three things that you should immediately do once you take your listing, upload it into Armless, and your listing goes live? The first thing is schedule your open houses. Get them scheduled. Get them on the books. Work with your uh, work with your sellers. I mean, during the listing presentation or, or when they're actually selling uh, or signing the paperwork, schedule those open houses. Let them know how many open houses you're going to be doing. I recommend three. The more that you have in the same neighborhood, because uh, remember, one of the overall goals is to get the neighbors interested. Having the neighbors come into your open house is a huge, huge plus. So get your open houses scheduled ASAP. Get them on the books. Whether you're hold, holding the open houses or you're having another West USA uh, agent hold the open houses, get them scheduled. This lets you know that it lets your sellers know that you are serious, that you're serious about marketing their property, that you take your job very, very serious. Because the last thing that you want is to have a seller wonder why 
you're not holding an open house for their house and their neighbors is. Uh, and it can create an uncomfortable moment. And immediately, uh, whether you use some of these phenomenal materials that the Bookspan Baker team is now offering, or you have a relationship with your title company and they produce certain materials, or you're producing your own materials out of RPR, wherever the materials come from, order them ASAP. What we do sometimes is wait, wait for the last minute. We can't get the materials to the open house or we're, we're just struggling at the last minute to get things printed. So get them ordered, get them printed, and be prepared as soon as possible. So when you're actually getting ready to do the open house, you are ready to go. So number one, schedule, and I recommend three open houses, but however many open houses you do, get them scheduled. Number two, ASAP, uh, I would get your just listed flyers. And, and whether you want to use just listed flyers, I have a company that I have been working with and we've been talking with that will actually produce a really sharp looking just listed postcards. Uh, and what they'll do is they'll actually print them, mail them, stamp them for you at a very, very reasonable rate. And it can be an automated system. And immediately within 24 to 48 hours, you could have up to 200 or you could have more. You could have 50. You could have 500. Um, but you could get these just listed postcards in the mail ASAP. But you got to remember the number one question that all neighbors have is how much is the house listed for? This is why if you put up a tube at your at your for sale sign and you go there 40 hours later, all the flyers are gone. OK, it's not because people are driving by and interested in the house It's because the neighbors are interested. They want to know how much the house is listed for. So create your flyers. And this is your opportunity to walk the neighborhood and hand out the flyers. I'm in a lot of respects. I uh, I take the passive aggressive approach to 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 selling. So I so when you're going door to door and you're introducing yourself and you're handing these flyers, you don't have to necessarily be in the mode that you're trying to sell your services. All you're trying to do is settle their curiosity and just let them know, hey, I just want to introduce myself. I'm so and so with West USA. I just listed the house around the corner and I know one of the things that the neighbors are always very curious about and want to know is how much the house is listed for. So I just wanted to give this flyer to you. And then what I would do is those same neighbors, and I would do as many houses as you can, uh, is, is once the house is actually sold, create just sold flyers and go door to door on the same houses, handing out the same flyer, but with the sales price. Because what do neighbors want to do? want to know after the house is sold? They want to know how much the house is sold for, and you don't want to have them depend on Zillow, Trulia, and Realtor.com because that is where you will lose the business. So walk the neighborhood, hand out the flyers. Remember, you don't have to sell anything. You're just letting the neighbors know how much the house is listed for. So schedule your three open houses. Just create your just listed flyers. Walk the neighborhood. And then the third thing is... Um, personally invite the neighbors to come to the open house. The open houses are a very, very big deal. Uh, when I used to sell and I used to do open houses, my overall objective was not buyers. It was getting the neighbors in. The more that I could do to get the neighbors in, the better the open house I felt like it was. So I would personally invite 20 or at least 20 of the nearest neighbors to the open house. And when you create your invites, create a special time just for them. Uh, if you're holding your open house from 12 to 4, have 11 to 12, a special time just for the neighbors where they know that they're not going to be walking the house with prospective buyers. It's a private showing. I would even just create, a, give them an option to schedule a one-on-one -on -one time with them. doesn't matter the time and day. If they want to just come see the house, and a lot of agents, again, they feel like, oh, this is a waste of time. These are the neighbors. The, the neighbors are who you want. So if they want to come and walk the house at 10 o'clock, this is your chance to actually spend one-on-one -on -one time with with a neighbor who might be interested in possibly selling the house or selling their house. So I would consider special invites. Um, I always used to use the wedding invitations. Go down to Office Max Staples, buy wedding invitations, print them out, make them look like they were invited to a wedding. And then on the envelope, you get a silver marker and put you're invited. And if you have to leave one of those on the door, I can guarantee you that it will be opened. Because why? They think they just got invited to a party. They have no idea that it is for an open house. So uh, one of the big things that we have, uh, we, we want to accomplish when marketing is open rates. So they will definitely open it. Again, have a special time for them to come. Include your number and, and, and a little line in there if they want to personally come and, and view the property at a special time. And then when you do have the open house and you, especially you have neighbors in, I'm a big fan of having RPR open. 
Okay, people want to know how much their house is worth. So if you have a neighbor come in, they, all you need to do is type in their address. And what I would do is I would just pop it in there, show them how much their house is worth. I would be willing to send them a mini report and a mini report only. Because in order to send them a mini report, what do you need? You need their email. I would never send them the full report. If they want a full 80, 90 page colored report on their house, you schedule a one on one time to have that personally delivered to them. But the more information that you can get from them, the better. So these are the three things that I would do if I came to Bob's house this evening to list it. Uh, and if I didn't get kicked out by Bernadette, I would. These are the three things that I would try to accomplish. Uh, she won't kick you out. No, would, she's all right. Will she feed me? No. Okay, well, then I'm not coming. <laughs> Apparently, there's nothing there for me. So uh, these are the th three things to do once you take a listing. So move right, right along. We've got a few announcements. You know, the cruise is coming around the corner, and I know, I know September 30th seems like a long ways away, but all the registrations need to be in. Your reservations need to be made by May. So, the, so it literally is right around the corner. This is your opportunity to spend seven days out at sea, Mexican Riviera Cruise, uh, with yours truly, uh, and we will just eat. We'll spend seven days just eating our way through the Pacific Ocean. But more importantly, while you're on the cruise, uh, you can get your all your renewal hours done. So this is a perfect opportunity. There's the website. Go to cruiseforcredit.com. We're going to send you the link out there. Uh, at the very least, if you're interested, contact us. Contact Brett. Uh, and get some more information because this is selling out. We have a lot of people sign up, and we want to make sure that you are with us. It's going to be a good time. And you've never seen me in a bathing suit, and I'm going to tell you what. You're not going to be disappointed. All right, so a couple CE classes coming up. Uh, they are the same CE class but different locations. Thursday, March 16th, which is obviously this week, at the Mesa office upstairs in the Wolock and Volk uh, office from 1 to 4. We're going to be doing a CE class on disclosure, uh, hosted by Larry Hibbler. If you've never sat in one of his CE classes, they are uh, phenomenal. He's a great communicator. So uh, we're going to send you the link to where you can sign up for any of our CE classes right now. But get signed up for that. And then if you can't make Thursday, March 16th, uh, we're having the exact same class on Friday the 17th up here at the corporate office. So, again, we're going to send you the link. So get signed up for that. Uh, get your some CE classes. And, hey, the end of the day, if you get all your CE classes done and you don't need CE cl classes while on the cruise ship, you're still on a cruise. For goodness sakes, who doesn't want to go on a cruise? So get signed up. Appreciate it. And those are our announcements. If you'd like some more information about any of those, um, feel free to uh, just email us at webinar at westusa.com. A couple of you are texting into – uh, the sh into the show here. You're wanting some information about our market company for the just listed flyers. Go ahead and email us at webinar at westusa.com with your request. Jason will get me the email and I will get you the name of the company. All right. So there has been, we're going to bring in the Hoff here. Uh, Mike, Michael, we're calling you Michael because there's a lot of confusion. Like people think I'm Michael and I'm Mike and people think you're Mike and you're Michael. So we're going to settle it right now. You're either the Hoff or you're Michael. Are we good on that? Well, I'll be Big Mike and you'll be Little Mike. I kind of <laughs> like that too. Well, he probably is bigger as he's eating all his food. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a fact. There has been a lot of discussions um, in, in regards to the term realtor, realty. Um, there's, there's always discussion, but especially in the use of domain names, email addresses and marketing material. So we thought we would invite you to kind of help educate us and let us uh, know some of the rules, some of the things, because, because we're rolling out these websites, these websites are phenomenal and people are buying domain names that, uh, well, and it's not our rule. People think like we're telling them that they can't, this is the department of real estate. We're trying to save you money because you don't want Judy Lowe and her crew to come knocking at. She works with a guy named Guido. <laughs> well, they are policing it a little bit, it looks like, out there. Um, the term realtor, in, in a lot of realtors out there um, are realtors, right? Yep. And some are real estate professionals. I'm a, uh, I'm a real realtor. A real realtor. Yes. Or realtor. A realtor. <laughs> it, it, and everybody says it all different ways, but it's realtor is, is how you pronounce it, but Let's first talk about Realtor. You know, you're out there doing real estate. 
and you're a member of a board. Now, you're a member of a local board, wherever board you're a member of, uh, Phoenix, you know, Scottsdale, or in the West Valley, or in the Southeast Valley, right? Well, you're also a member of the board for Arizona, and then you're also a member of the board for the National Association of Realtors, who put the word realtor out there. And when you subscribe uh, to the board and become a realtor, you also su subscribe to the code, right? So what a wonderful thing that when they came out with this on the code. I mean, as a real estate professional, you're out there working in the business. And we subscribe to this code, and there's all these different articles in the code. And I guarantee nobody's really read the code too much out there. Hopefully some of the people have. But when you get in trouble and somebody files a complaint against you, then you're going to know whatever code that is, right? Um, but – we subscribe to this code. I mean, think about the Knights of the Round Table, right? They subscribe to a code. Dun, dun, dun. Right? And so do we. So in present time, if you go through the code, look at this. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited when I talk about Realtor and part of this code that we are together and we agree that we're going to treat people fairly and, and, and work together. And we have all these articles and we're going to do a great thing. So really be proud that you're a realtor and that you are subscribing to this code. I mean, work with your fellow realtor out there um, on all the transactions. You know, as a broker, Bob and I and Dale and, and Pam deal with realtors arguing and fighting back and forth all the time, but they forget they're part of this code, you know, that we're all one trying to work together. And what all this issues are when it comes to how to use the word realtor um, is because NAR wants to protect that. They want to protect how we work as realtors out there. And as you can see from all the examples that, that I put up there is not every person that's in real estate is a realtor. You know, not everybody subscribes to this code. So the use of this word is very important. And when you're out there setting up your domain names or you're doing advertising or promotion with, with West USA Realty, we have advertising at westusa.com where you're going to submit for approval to make sure you're up to good with all ADRE and NRA code. Um, and Realtor is one of those. So it, on this slide here, you can really see that the use of a domain name on this has to be very specific. You can use Realtor in your domain name as long as your name is in there. Okay, you can't do Michael Hofstad or azrealtor.com because that would be considered a violation. It can be Michael Hofstad or realtor.com. Um, or you can use your company, which is westusarealtor.com, which is probably already taken, I would imagine. Um, but you can't use phoenixrealtor.com or phoenixazrealtor.com. Can you can you have the word realtor first, like realtor Michael Hofstetter? You can. You can use it in any order. I can use michaelrealtorhofstetter.com. As long as my name is in there and the word realtor is in there and nothing else is. You know, so you can mix up your name as you need to. Now, when you're using your name, that's another issue too because see we co-mingle some of these issues when it comes to realtor.com um, or NAR rules or ADRE rules. Um, and, and matter of fact, if my name on my license is Michael Hofstetter, I can't use Mike Hofstetter. I need to use Michael Hofstetter because that's what's on my license. So I can't use Mike Hofstetter Realtor.com. That would fly with NAR, but it's not going to fly with ADRE, you see. So if, if I want to use that as an alias, which maybe I'll change mine to Hoff, and that would be a good idea yeah. to put an, an alias of Hoff on there. But um, and then I could start using that if I need to because now ADRE knows who I am. They know the name and they can search, you know, by that way. So as you can see up there, you know, great realtor, best realtor, the word realtor. And it doesn't have to be capitalized in any of the web domains. So any marketing and advertising has to be capitalized with the logo. But in web domains, it does not because – um, whether it's capitalized or not, it doesn't matter because it goes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, domain lowercase. names are not case sensitive. They're not case sensitive. I mean, you can put it in and your marketing and advertising is capital. Um, that's fine. But when people type it in, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not case sensitive there. All right. So let's move on to the next one. 
So as you could tell from the first one, we have, you know, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable, but the term realtor, whether it's in a part of the domain or any other fashions out there, may not be used as a descriptive word or phrases. Well, back back to those domains, what about sure. the term realty? Realty. How do how do you spell realty? I, I forgot. R R E E L T E E. <laughs> Real teeth, right? No, but uh, realty is different. Okay. And, and and that falls under A D R E. You know, so if you say real estate or real T, you want to be careful that you don't sound like you're a company out there. Um, and, and that's our biggest concern. But that's separate than Realtor when it comes to you know NAR rules or regulations. That's ADRE rules and regulations. But when you're using descriptive words like number one realtor, number one, or it, you can't use that either. None of those are um, acceptable that are up there right now. Um, they're all incorrect. The only way that you can use it in an email out there or in a web domain is if it's your name that's on your license with ADRE and the word realtor. All right, next, the term realtor should never be used to denote an occupation, okay, or business. Do not combine words like your, my, or descriptive words on that. So Jane Doe, my realtor doesn't work, or your Chicago realtor. Um, all examples are. I can see how that would be a big one because that's. I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds cool. Yep. And people even I've I've seen domain names where it's myrealtor.com. You know that one's already taken, but that is not approved from uh, NAR, and you can't use that or J, Jane Doe. We just had one uh, would which was like Jane Doe AZ Realtor.com, um, and just because of that AZ that was put in there, that makes that an invalid domain. So again, you want to make sure it's just your name that's on the license if you want to use realtor.com. And matter of fact, um, if you go to NAR, they have realtor websites now. Um, not websites, but domains. You can buy a domain that is dot .realtor. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than a regular domain. So you can be Michael Hofstetter dot .realtor and not even work with the .com. So that's a new thing. Well, it's been out for a couple of years now. Um, you can also get Ninja. Ninja. My wife's got Mindy dot Ninja. That's her <laughs> website. I'm like, I got to figure that one out. They got everything. They got everything that's coming out. But if you want to use now, you could do, um, you could probably do Jane Doe, um, or, or let's say Arizona's Best dot Realtor. That's another question because that's a domain name after the fact. Uh, but prior to the period. Where you does know. someone go if they want the dot .realtor domain? Where would we get that? Anyone you would know? go to, you know, NAR. Okay. No, National Association of Realtors. I think it's like 50 bucks a year um, for that realtor domain. Uh, but they, I know they index that a little bit different when it comes to searches. Uh, so you might get a little bit more traffic for that amount. It was free for everybody if they would just get on the ball and get it. Yes, it was free. I, I got it amount. myself. Yeah. Yeah. But now I think you have to pay for it because I got it free. Yeah, for a you do. While too. And it's either 50 or 59 bucks. And I think you can get your first year free. So if you haven't signed up for it yet, uh, you can get your first year free and, and try to make that work. But right here is all examples of improper use uh, of the word realtor. Um, the next is, is email addresses. You know, when it comes to email addresses as brokers, um, I always stress out there, try to get a very secure email address. If you're using Google or a Yahoo or one of the free services out there, it is not secure. And we are having a lot of issues with people hacking into those um, emails and they're searching for um, any kind of account numbers that are in there. Or if uh, you're doing wire transfers, that's the big thing. Uh, so highly recommend you get a secure one. West USA has a secure one, um, or you can pay for a service to get a secure one. Right, Bob? You've dealt with those, haven't you? We've got some that are coming through right now um, with uh, web addresses that, I mean, uh, email addresses that are not secure. I'm getting a, uh, several emails, and I got another one from Nancy yesterday. She didn't send it. She says, you ought to read this. It's just real interesting. But it wasn't from her. Right. And then I think Clay allegedly sent one out yesterday. He doesn't send emails out. So 
Yeah, and so if you do get an email from Clay Fouts uh, in the last 24 hours, uh, delete it, ignore it, because that did go out. And uh, and whoever hacked into it and sent it out was requesting people to go into DocuSign and providing their, their Gmail credentials. <laughs> you know, it, it, what it is, I mean, it, it's these Trojans that are out there on the computers, and anybody can be hacked. I mean, if Clay got hacked, anybody can get hacked because we have secure emails out there. And they're looking for that. You know, these people are looking for realtors that have their emails, especially with the word realtor in it. You know, yeah. it, it, they can they have these spiders that search the Internet and, and look for specific realtors, um, you know, that have these domains and they'll try to figure out a way to hack them. And it's just easier to hack a, a Gmail. Account. Yeah. And it's a good rule of thumb. I mean, if you get anything uh, requesting information that you're not sure about, just pick up the phone and call and confirm, especially anything that's asking for you to input your credentials. Yeah, and that's how they get you. So if you get an email sent over saying, hey, take a look at this offer and you don't know anything about it, you need to call or delete that email. Be very careful at all times, even if yeah. um, you think you know what it is or it's coming from a reputable person. Be careful on what you click on your phone. Yeah, that's an issue, too. Be careful on the phone because they can put software on your phone, um, but more on your computer by clicking. Look, even if it says it's a PDF, sometimes you can look after it. It's not a PDF. You know, so be careful of all those Trojans that are coming through. And that's what they are. They'll even open up a document, look valid, but that's running software in the background. And that's what they're tra they're tracking your keystrokes. And that's how they're yeah. getting in by by tracking your keystrokes on um, unsecure emails. So as you can see here, even not only on the Web addresses, but on your email, you have to be careful on how you write up Realtor on there. You know, John Doe Realtor for the use of domains here does not need to be separated uh, right here on email, the term realtor does not need to be separated from the member's name or the firm with punctuations that they have here. OK, so they can be um, together. And that's what they would prefer to be together because the periods and the and the dashes can cause problems for um, email addresses out there. All right. So make sure that, you know, if you if you're not sure sending in, if you're with West USA Realty, sending in to advertising at WestUSA.com. Uh, what are one of our brokers and uh, we'll take a look at that and make sure that it's all good and uh, you're compliant. All right. Uh, while we still have a couple minutes, this maybe uh, and Bob, you can feel free to interject as well. Uh, just maybe some common mistakes of how we're misusing the term realtor in our marketing materials and, and some things to think about. Yeah. That'd and be and good. what are what are the fines? Like what happens if if we get busted here? Bob, do you have any comments on that? Well, the, the fines, I, we, we've never got a fine that I no, can recall. That I they uh, get after you and tell you, don't do that. <laughs> and they send it right on into the broker is is where they go with this stuff. But but there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things that you, you just need to watch out for in – I don't. I I get a lot of stuff that comes in, and I sometimes I sit and wonder. Then I have to actually go into NAR's book and start reading some of this stuff because, it, as we're looking at it right now, Michael, all this stuff you got here. Now, what did you say? Now, somebody is listening to you. What did you just say? Well, they don't know, and and you really have to research some of this stuff. But the best thing to do is send it into the brokers here for approval. And we'll take a look at it, and we may have to research it. Uh, and you and we have a special email address for that. Is it what is, is it marketing? Ad, at, advertising. No, advertising at westusa.com. Yeah. So if you got any marketing materials, you got any questions about anything to do with marketing, you can always email that to advertising at westusa.com, and uh, we'll definitely get the response back to you in regards to that. Yeah, and the good part is when when this does happen, they normally send a cease and desist over. And I haven't seen any fines yet, but, you know, think about it. If you didn't put it up right the first time and uh, you get a cease and desist, now you got to change your web address. And, and the, the fines not be, might not be the worst part. If you've been using this for a year or two and you've been pushing all your marketing and advertising to it and you have all your meta tags set up on your website and, and everything and you have to change your domain name now. I don't know if you guys know this, but when you change your domain name, yeah. it also changes your ranking on Google search and all this other stuff online. So now you're going to be losing out on a lot of traffic. 
So that could be the fine alone. Like, oh my God, you know, now I'm, I'm not ranked anymore. I have to get a new web address and everything gets reset. Make sure it's correct. Yes. Before starting. Yeah, that's always good. So how, uh, how do you spell realty? Bob, how do you spell realty? You know how to spell realty. it. <laughs> R-E-E-L-A-A. -E we have all different kinds of ways to spell it. -E. I've got something right here. This is a cashier's check. It says to the order of West USA reality. Reality. Uh, and I asked you earlier, I said, does anybody know how to spell realty? Apparently no one does. No one. But it's R-E-A-L-T-Y. And this, they always spell it reality. You can see that right on there. <laughs> That's a cashier. But I tell you what, if it was made payable to me, I wouldn't care. I'd still you, cash that sucker. You <laughs> go for it. You can misspell my name all you want. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody at the bank will know how to spell it anyway. Just send it in. <laughs> all right, any other just things that we need to keep an eye out on just using the term realtor just on marketing materials in general? Um, in general, on anything that you use uh, that you're typing up or writing, uh, just capitalize it. Make sure it's capitalized and has the copyright. Uh, mode or the little symbol the after. Trademark, if you, yeah. yeah, if you're using Word, um, you can easily add that in there. Uh, I think a lot of people don't capitalize it when they're writing Realtor um, up, and that's probably our biggest um, offense, if you would consider it an offense. But the biggest mistake that we have is that people don't capitalize it with the um, copyright logo. All right, appreciate it, Hoff, as always. Thank you. Um, and more importantly, I mean, you know, Bob brought up a good point. So you, you've heard all this. So now what? That would be a great reason if you're thinking about buying a new domain. Uh, you can always email us at webinar at westusa.com. We'll send you a copy of these slides so you can print them and, and you can have a reference point. But uh, but again, if you're in question, you're not sure, always email us at advertising at westusa.com. And, and this is also, um, I wrote a blog about it, so we have a blog, and then it's also in the Westwards that just came out um, Good. on this material. So you can pull it off the Westwards also. All right, thanks, Hoff. All right, Bob, help us stay out of trouble. <laughs> okay. Somebody called me yesterday and says, your agent showed my property a couple of days ago, and there's a bird in the house. And the bird doo-dooed all over the house. It's going to cost $300 to fix it, so uh, you sending me a check, or what are you doing? you got to be kidding. Well, first of all, I gave the agent a call, and she says, no, the bird was in there when I went in there and scared me. She says, yeah, it was all over. And uh, I said, well, okay, the other question then is, since you were the last one in the house, the broker on the other side wants to know if you're going to clean this up and pay for it. It's $300 to get it cleaned. And she says, no. <laughs> I said, okay, you have gave me the right answers here. I'll call the dude up right now and tell him what the answers are. The bird was there and you're not paying for it. So I made a call to dude over at the other uh, firm and he whined on and whined on as a matter of fact after his name here i'd have three w's that isn't world wide web that's whine 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 <laughs> uh about this house so i i don't know what's going to happen there i said no the bird was in there and my agent said she would not pay for it he said well what do you think about this well i wasn't there so i have no thoughts about it at all i'm just listening to what you're telling me i'm i'm sorry we're not going to clean your house. So um, just one of those things. So now he doesn't like me, I guess. I don't know. I guess those things happen. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was listening to uh, Matt talking, and here's what we're getting a lot of, and, and Michael uh, confirmed this this morning, we're getting a lot of offers in on houses with buyer contingency. That means I got to sell my house before I can buy yours. And I have many years I've wondered why would somebody go out to buy a house and actually buy it, but they can't buy it because they don't have any money. They have to sell their house to get the money so that they can buy the next house. And they want us to just go on hold until you get through messing with your house which may take 60 days, 90 days, I don't know. 
It's not even on the market yet, and you'll actually ask more money than it's worth, usually, so it's not going to sell, and you want us to wait. So uh, w one of the things that I suggest you do is get those flyers made up, as you were talking about, Michael. Uh, get those flyers made up. You go out there and take a listing. Get flyers out there and work with these fellows. Get some money for these people first. Get them pre-qualified, even though they haven't sold their house yet. Get things done so that you're ready. You're ready to go out and buy a home then. But you got to have the cash because all houses, almost, I'd say 99% are cash. Either cash or you borrowed the cash to pay cash for the house. So get it done. All right. What else we got? Oh, here, here's a lady call me, and I get this call a lot. I'm going to take a listing where the house is owned by a trust. Yeah, we do a lot of those. Well, what's different about that? Well, not really anything except it's owned by a trust. Well, how do I have the trust sign it? Well, you got to find the trustee, the person who's uh, in charge of this thing, and put down uh, the Peterson Trust by Mr. Peterson trustee so that's the way you have to sign these things off and they're they're not any different you're just selling them and they do if there's any uh trust work that has to be done of course the title company uh gets that all together and lets you know what they need so signing up a trust is not a problem okay there was something else in here oh yeah unseen property being purchased has that happened? Yeah, that happens once in a while, but that is quite a case. Somebody wanted to buy some property. They were from another country even. Uh, but apparently, they were real. They really wanted to buy a property, but they couldn't get here to see it because they had some medical issues or something. And uh, But they got the house back and forth uh, from the Internet. And they wanted to buy this house. Can they do that? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, you want to be very careful of that. And, of course, when they get over and view the property, they can take a look at it and say, well, we decided we don't like this because it's facing the wrong direction or whatever the issue with the house may be. They can um, get out of the deal. They can get out of the, uh, the situation. So it's it's all set up in the contracts so that you can get out of it. And then an, another one that comes up quite often, here's some people, I, I don't remember if I, I don't think I told this story last week, but here's a, a house listed by Frank over there in Scottsdale, and he got five feedback uh, showings. He got, and they said that it's, the house smelled terribly like smoke. Well, then Frank told me that the man and woman that owned it for 25 years have smoked there 25 years inside the house. So would it smell like smoke? Why, <laughs> certainly. Well, what can you do about that? And and I, we've got somebody in our company. They also do something else. They get rid of smoke smells, and they can actually get rid of even if there were a dead body in there, had been in there for a while, they can get rid of that too with a machine that they own. And the body or the smell? They can get rid of both. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that happen before. <laughs> yes. And uh, you can always call Mary Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. She's over at the Arrowhead office, and her and her husband bought a, uh, a really big machine they can go in and kill anything with it uh, uh, the smoke uh, any kind of a smell so you can always call mary and and she gets business because i uh, forward it on because people call me and ask me so it's interesting you can get rid of that smoke smell and boy i'll tell you there's some of these properties matter of fact i gave that uh, number to one of the guys in the same office over there in uh, Omergadich, yeah, he got rid of all the smell over there in the house he had. He had to call in, and um, they got it done. So now maybe it'll sell. You know, 
who does who who do you do business with sometimes like like we buy insurance that lasts a year at a time and you you wonder uh, uh who sold it to you i i've had it for 17 years now we bought it right here in this building a lady come over and sold it to me and clay and dale we all bought the insurance we don't know who she was because she's never contacted us since then but she's getting royalties on that insurance each year. I have no idea who she was. But here's a guy that sold it to my wife. It's a Medicare insurance. And every year he sends us out. Here it is right here. Scott Kirby. What a guy. It says, thank you for your business. Just once a year. And we remember Frank or uh, Scott Kirby. I said, Frank, do you, I can't even remember Scott. <laughs> but uh, one of the places that you can get cards like this and you can get warnings that uh, you need to send somebody something is send out cards. I own that myself. And here's three warnings I got. Dick Dodson's birthday is coming up, 315. Uh, Michelle Seeley downstairs here, 317. And, and Glenn, uh, 317, that's their birthdays that, that that comes on my computer, then I know I go to send out cards, click it, bang, and there goes a card to these people. April 9th, that's mine. It's coming up, Bob. I have to write it into my system. We'll see how important I am to Bob right here. Mike. <laughs> you, <laughs> we'll find out in April, right? <laughs> you send me an email, if, and I'll put it in my system, and I'll send you a card. It's really, I think it cost me something like, 50 cents or something like that. They put a stamp on it and send it out. And uh, it, it's a great system to keep in tr track of everybody you ever knew. And there's, let me show you that. There, there's the card. See on the back it, who it went to and who it came from. So anyway, now <clears throat> here, here's a, Here's something I got. Somebody wants to advertise, and, and uh, let me tell you what it says on this flyer. She's going to hand this flyer out, but she said, wait a minute. Better see if Bob will approve this. And uh, you can see on here that I will not approve it as you read it, the, the, the big print here. And it says on there, all attendees to come to this, uh, this thing she's having at the office, or all attendees get $500 to use at closing well wait a minute are a bunch of people coming in there expecting five one hundred dollar bills or something that's what i'm afraid of and thank goodness she sent it to me because i straightened it out for her. i sent it back to her right here it is all attendees will receive a five hundred dollar credit through escrow of a home you purchase using the services of Bob Stevens or whoever it may be of West USA Realty. And it straightened us out for her because she might have gotten in trouble with this. Y you really need to send these things in, just advertising.com, isn't it? Advertising, advertising at WestUSA.com. At, at WestUSA. And actually, that comes over to me. It comes into my computer. And I look it over for you and try to get that straight. And then there's another fellow I wanted to give away money. And um, the thing about disclosing of commission is called rebates. Uh, here, I, I don't even, I hate the word rebate, but uh, can I, here's the issue. This comes from Legal Hotline. Can the licensee legally give a $500 gift card to a buyer or seller after close of escrow? Answer, probably not. Discussion. The issue of commission rebates may seem confusing. HUD provides instruction on how a licensee will properly provide a commission rebate. And if they put it into the HUD statement, then you can get away with it. And they prefer that you write it into the contract because the commissioner would like to see it written into the contract. <laughs> So you got to be careful about giving money away. Then I wonder, do we make too much money or something? I don't, but uh, th these are all good uh, things to do, but make sure that you're getting it right. Oh, here's a, here's a beautiful thing that one of the gals wrote here. Uh, and this is three pages of West USA Realty. 
and it talks about different things. This is a, uh, do I need a permit to do that? The, these are articles that is in her newsletter, local entertainment events counter. She's got three pages of this stuff, but you click on one of these and it widens into a whole page of good stuff. Uh, and that's something to think about too, if you're going to do any kind of advertising. And you can see this gal has been in the business for years and years, since 1985, I think, and she does a, a terrific job. And you, what is that? She uses something called Home Action. Yeah, powered by Home Actions. Yeah. Well, that's that's just one firm you can use. There's more than that that's out there, and that's a beautiful flyer i looked it over and it's it's really laid out great it's got her picture on the front uh, so anyway how many people ask you if you think this room is big enough for a pool table when you're <laughs> when you're buying a home they do ask the question do the agents know the answer no, usually they don't. I don't even know the answer, and I own a pool table. But one of the things I have is something from Connolly Billiards here. I've had it for years and years. The ultimate game room planning chart. And you can see, it. well, you can't see it because you're not sitting here. <laughs> but you can find out how big the uh, the area needs to be for a nine-foot an eight foot, an eight foot home table, all these tables. How much room do you need so that somebody can actually play pool in that room? And talking about that, my personal home that's for sale right now, it's got a beautiful pool table room in it. And I might even give up the pool table if somebody pays full price. <laughs> then, one of the things we had was a, a, an explanation the other day, a presentation by Mike Tetro about buyer broker exclusive employment agreements. Does anybody use those? Hardly anybody. Uh, I, I don't know why. So how do you get paid when you sell real estate? If you sell somebody else's listing, it's in the MLS and it tells you what they're going to pay you. Wait a minute. I have a buyer. How am I going to get paid by a buyer if I take a buyer out? Well, if you have a buyer broker exclusive employment agreement, you will be sure to get paid. And sometimes people work, work on these people for months and months before they get them on a contract. But you need to know how you're going to get paid because they might all of a sudden stiff you by saying, uh, eh, we're going to get this uh, this house right here, but we're going to have it written up by somebody else. That happened the other day. By the way, Michael, you'll be hearing about that. You'll get a, a letter on it. <laughs> Thanks and, for the update, Bob. <laughs> and uh, so that's called procuring cause. But. You better take a look at the buyer broker exclusive employment agreement. And he says, I don't let other people decide how much money I make. When I take a buyer out, they've sat with me and they know that I'm going to make a certain percentage on this transaction if I find them a house. So I thought that was amazing. He gives a great presentation. Perfect. All right, Bob, appreciate it. Hoff, appreciate it. As always, like us on our perspective uh Facebook page. Each office has its own Facebook page. Some great, great information on those. So uh, reach out, get connected. And I leave you with a quote of the day from Albert Schweitzer. Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you are doing, you will be successful. So I leave you with, if you hate this job, find another one. That's right. Go out and sell a home. <laughs>